For the last month, we followed the plight of Madison County Sheriff David Woolfork. He is facing accusations of misconduct from three different women. An order of protection has been issued against him, and a majority of the county commission has now asked him to resign. In the wake of Monday's events and allegations detailed at the outset of this broadcast, we've invited Jackson attorney Mark Donahoe, who represents the sheriff, to join us, and he is here with us live. Mark, I appreciate you coming to be it's with us today. pleasure to be here, Steve. Always a pleasure to be with you. Mark, let's get right to this. The county commission on Monday took a vote of 19 to 6 to ask the sheriff to step down, and they said, if you don't do it by 5 o'clock next Monday, we're going to start ouster proceedings. First off, what was his reaction to that? Well, as anybody would, you know, you, uh, does somebody else have the ability to tell you what you should or shouldn't do if you're, uh, if you're a constitutionally elected officer? Uh, the sheriff's level-headed enough that, that he uh, didn't make any snap decisions, any rash decisions. Uh, he discussed it, we discussed it, we will discuss it again. Um, I'm still doing some research to answer some questions for us as to whether or not what the proper course of action is to take. Um, so there'll be several things that we'll look at and discuss between now and then and make a decision. You know, the initial reaction is why at this point he's not done anything that supports a malfeasance in office or supports any criminal charge or anything like that. And the, the legal process itself hasn't even begun to start yet on any of the other issues that have come up. So, you know, why go about this at this point other than seemingly typically for political reasons when you have an election that's only nine months away? Mark, if five o'clock Monday comes and there is no change and he decides right. that he wants to continue to fight these charges, if that happens, how does an ouster process work? What happens then? Well, it's a lawsuit. Um, filed in either Chancery, uh, usually in Chancery Court, mm -hmm. uh, can be filed in another court um, that alleges that the sheriff has, or the officer, or the uh, holding office person that they allege committed some type of action. Then they have to set out what type of action that is. It's brought it's typically by the county attorney, although there seems to be some, some uh, case law that I'm still looking at. But my initial review of it seems to be that they may not be able to bring it against the sheriff. Um, it may be required to be brought by the uh, attorney general's office. So it's hard to say at this point whether they actually have the ability to bring it against him or not. We're still examining that and still looking at that. I, I don't know for sure. But it's a lawsuit. It proceeds like any other lawsuit. It'll go through a discovery phase and it'll go to a jury. How long of a time frame are we talking about before this would actually occur, ballpark? Uh, well, to go through the uh, discovery process, you know, typically you look at a case like this is somewhere uh, six months to a year. The sheriff has said, while he has admitted to some things, he has also said that he believes that these allegations have been politically motivated. Who or what are the political forces? that are doing this? Well, the, the OP showed clearly that uh, Frankie Lacks, who's a long-standing member, uh, I'm sorry, a long-standing opponent, political opponent of the sheriff, uh, was but is it directly involved in this uh, allegation by Sangster uh, as far as the order of protection goes. We're talking about just for those who share in Sangster, right. a deputy in the department, right? Um, Sangster made the allegation and you know a lot of people didn't hear the testimony at the uh, first order uh, of protection hearing and and that one's coming up de novo again in december but a lot of people didn't hear that first testimony where she said she didn't call the police and she thought maybe the sheriff the neighbors did is what she told the police when they got there the problem with that is she actually called frankie lax well we were able to uh, get her to admit that Lax had been working for her for a, a number of months prior to this allegation doing some type of investigation against the sheriff. Now, the judge at that time wouldn't allow us to go into that. I think that was in, that was wrong and inappropriate. And, and you may got another do that in the up. appeal hearing. All right, I want to hold you here because sure. we've got to take a break. When we come back, we're going to keep Mark Donahoe and we'll also be talking about options for his client, Sheriff David Woolfork. Stay with us on Jackson 24-7.
And we continue our conversation with attorney Mark Donahoe, who represents Sheriff David Woolfork. Mark, an independent investigation was conducted by the county commission into a number of these allegations. In that report that was released Monday, the investigator Jeffrey Beamer said that each of the two women, Sangster and Lieutenant Lisa Balderrama, quoting from the report, were credible witnesses. He said without qualification in that report that the sheriff was not a credible witness. What is the response to that? I have no idea how he makes those determinations or why he would say that. I mean, clearly that's not, that is directly contrary to the testimony that has so far been given. You know, the sheriff denies that there was any action to support any of the allegations that have been made so far, and he maintains that. And for this guy to say that, I have no idea where that comes from or how he even thinks he reaches that allegation. I can tell you for sure that Balderrama testified under oath in a previous hearing that she had no relationship with the sheriff. So you tell me how she becomes credible all of a sudden where she's testified previously under oath that, it would, that there was no relationship at all. Mark, one of the other things that was in the report that Balderrama says, and I'm paraphrasing this, that the sheriff traded sexual favors in order for her to make personnel adjustments in the department, which the investigator says this is a potentially, in his words, heinous act. Again, that's the investigator's, his opinion only. It doesn't matter about anything. It doesn't make any difference. A jury will make all those determinations after cross-examination, which there was none of during this investigation by somebody who was handpicked by the county attorney who is a previous chairman of the Republican Party here. Mark, before all of this came to light, as it has in the last month and a half or so, to what degree did the sheriff anticipate that this was going to happen, that these women were going to come forward with these charges? Well, there was none. I mean, and the reason being is there's been no action taken by the sheriff to, to lend any credibility to any of the allegations that have been brought forward. And what everybody's missing here, and what we continue to miss is, the sheriff has served this county for as a sheriff for 20 years. He's been in law enforcement for 35 years. The sheriff's office has done a great job they continue to do a great job. It's a very difficult job. And none of this affects the sheriff's office and its ability to do the job or the sheriff and his ability to do his job. It doesn't have anything to do with running the sheriff's office. It's all about whether or not the political forces against him can beat him at the next election. That is that raises this question. There are people in this community who their exposure to this has been through media. And there's certainly going to be some people who would say, how does the credibility of this department, how is that maintained if we've got this swirl and shroud going on concerning right. the sheriff? Well, again, I've asked everyone over and over and over, we have the greatest legal system in the world. Let the legal system run its course. Let me get a witness on the stand with full ability to cross-examine that witness, and let's see what the public then decides or what a jury says happens. Don't take what's been reported. It's one-sided. It's always one-sided. It's always that way. Wait until you hear everything come out in court and then make a decision. Is there anything that would ultimately happen that you as his attorney would say to the sheriff in the best interest of yourself and the county, it would be better if you stepped aside and concentrated on fighting the personal charges against you? Well, the sheriff uh, has enough time in to retire. He is of the age that he can retire. And he may make that decision down the road at some point. Right now, my job is to advise him of all the different options as I would any client and let that client then make the best decision for them at, at a certain time. And I'm sure that he's considering that at some point or may consider it at some point. If he tells me that's the road he wants to go down, then I'll move in that direction. Mark, I appreciate your time and thank you for being with Always us. Always my pleasure, Steve. Thank you. Coming up, we'll shift gears to your pocketbook. Our good friend, Dr. Amy Eliza of UT Extension is here and she'll tell us how to keep from breaking the bank at this Christmas season. Amy's advice is right after the weather with Kelsey Greer.